come to concrete realizations of, on the different levels we operate. There are a, a lot of levels, have you, as, as we have seen in uh, these days, uh, and we will see also in the future. The levels are different, but the common element is the need to, uh, the need to, uh, to come to uh, concrete realizations in uh, integrating uh, and so on and so on. I will not make the list. In this, uh, we, we began in November 11, we are a young post uh, action, uh, in fact. But time is uh, going fast because four years uh, of a post action uh, is not a long time. It's a good time, but not a long time because uh, time is, uh, we are all, have also a lot to do and so on and so on. So that the time is now come, it's now, uh, it's now the time to begin to present uh, some realizations in a concrete uh, way. And we have had in the last uh, months, many, uh, the last months and also the last weeks, uh, and, and even more in the last weeks than in the last months, uh, a lot of uh, some very important contacts uh, in working group one, working group two, and so on. And uh, particularly, I uh, will not make now the list because we are already uh, indicated some realizations and we have uh, in the different groups and uh, in the steering group and uh, of course in Compostela we will have the possibility to, to make a, a general survey of all these uh, contacts and also of these uh, um, realizations. Um, among these uh, very big effort, there is a the seed the era state the seeds which are who are also uh, among the founders of the cross section and uh, are related to since many uh, decades uh, since the beginning of the seed era state is older uh, so I say that so uh, with many relations and so on and uh, also with uh, uh, good friendship between the director of the and so we uh, wanted to uh, realize bilateral now uh, some, uh, some realizations. Uh, I will not go uh, into details to leave uh, uh, to Cyril Massé, to Emiliano de Innocenti the pleasure to do that. And I think that this uh, that has to be seen as an example of what uh, also in other fields and so on, we have, we have to do. Uh, and and in, in that sense, I will present uh, uh, both uh, speakers and uh, also the fact that they present their thoughts in a joint uh, uh, presentation, which is also symbolically what we have, uh, what we intend to do. Many thanks for that, many thanks for you, and the floor is to you. Thank you, Professor Paravicini. Now we are joining. Me. Uh, 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 Paul Bertrand was intended to speak to you today. Uh, I forgot to uh, excuse him. He could 
is seen as a conversation. As you can easily imagine, no meaningful conversation could happen if the participants don't share some of the building blocks of the communication. At least as a guide metaphor, one may think that uh, the interoperability uh, is in itself uh, an approach to found a common ground and provide shared blocks to allow conversations. Conversation amongst different resources, individuals and institutions. Since the beginning of the history of computing in the humanities, interoperability and accessibility were two central, closely related issues. At first, really at the beginning in the golden era of the computing in the humanities, the matter was only related to the individual. You have done a nice work, but the tools you have used are not supported anymore. The files you created are not readable using the updated versions of, the, of a certain software, etc. etc. In this per perspective, interoperability and accessibility concepts are really close, were really close, and the domain of the problem were only individual. This was the core of the problem during the 80s and the 90s. Individual scholars and institutions were facing the problem of completely lose their data, or if you prefer to lose the possibility to access the data, due to the constant market evolution. A lot of concrete examples could be easily made, but I'll only recall the general rule and the context at the times. The concept of computing in the humanities was still in its in its childhood, only a few geeks had the ICT skills to use a database. There were no internet at all and no search engines. PCs were not as ubiquitous as today and not as simple to be used. And a lot of applications were written for the DOS even in the major Windows era. At the time, there were little or, or no real alternatives to the commercial application, applications for database management systems. Microsoft Fox Pro, for example, and later in the era of real relational database management systems, Access. Your available data were closed into the so-called walled gardens, and bringing them outside the garden was tricky and expensive as a task. They require skills to accomplish such a task, why fair greater of the, average, of the average IT level of a single scholar. To keep their data accessible over the time, users were forced to constantly upgrade both their operative systems and applications, and or occasionally to migrate all their environments to newer platforms, both from an hardware and a software point of view. If we want to continue using the internet as a conversation metaphor, in such a context, we were still in presence of a private conversation. Furthermore, in the, dominant, uh, the dominant architecture was, as we say, the standalone machine. Of course, there were ways to connect together many PCs and to share common resources, but, especially in the 80s and the early 90s, the available technology wasn't fully mature because of lack of common standards, low bandwidth, low error tolerance thresholds, and so on. And was expensive and nearly impossible to handle this kind of technology for an individual scholar. One could rightly say that the situation was exactly the same for the whole ICT of that period, a constant struggle for market leadership into a very fragmented market and for market standards. In this situation, where a conversation, if this situation were a conversation, the goal would be to show, to shout louder than other participants. During this quite pioneeristic era, Sysmer started developing its own information system according to the zeitgeist. Many standalone projects driven by scholars doing research on different aspects of medieval Latin culture using different approaches. A typical private conversation from time to time joined to other conversation but without a common shared ground. In this phase, a 
first core of project was set up the bibliographic repository, which is Media Latino, the author's repository, which is Isla, and the manuscripts and work repository, which was called at the time Spock. Until the uh, two, uh, thousand, the 2000, the main projects, namely MED, Islam, etc., were still using a standalone approach, resulting in a partly unplanned growth of redundant lists and information, not fully normalized nor optimized, and, worst, poorly connected. At this point of the story, here are two of the key concepts of our presentation, the network technologies, internet and the web and the web-based applications, and the authority lists. An ancient Chinese curse says, may you live in interesting times, suggesting that cope with a lot of sudden and deep changes could be very difficult and tiring. The period from the standalone era to the internet era could be easily defined as an interesting one in the sense of the Chinese curse. <coughs> a lot of changes, both on the scientific and technological point of view, emerged. Furthermore, the needed findings to actually do the switch were hard to find. To focus only on the scientific and, te and the technological issues, Sisman rebuilt from scratch its local area network architecture and developed a number of web applications to manage its project with a collaborative point of view, <coughs> leaving FoxPro, that wasn't a truly relational database management system, for a SQL-based platform based on the entity relation model. Starting from Medio Volatino, the bibliographic repository, and Bislam, the author's repository, a lot of different applications were developed using common data structures for anthroponics, shelf marks, place names, and so on. From the point of view of the info architecture, a first quite high level of integration was reached. Also, through the use of common and checked lists for the most important titles, as I say, the authors, text, and manuscripts. But with the internet era, the possibility to set up a collaborative, shared environment became real, and for the most relevant project, were developed public websites to allow an external editorial staff do the data entry, relying on the shared lists and data to speed the work and avoid errors. Taking the conversation to the next level required to develop a common gateway to launch cross database searches over the shared data. The aim was to free the user, a scholar or a researcher, from the need to know in which particular project the information is needed was stored. So, starting from the uh, two, uh, uh, 2006, a project called AEAIML, which is Archivio Integrato per il Medioevo Latino, was developed to bring meta search capabilities over the databases within the SISME local area network. For the first time, the task of the user was only to do the right question without the need to know to what single DB and furthermore the appropriate results were presented using a unified interface. With the use of the web technologies and the development of a network of a, a particular XML schema to manage the vast amount of data produced by the SISMA research staff over the years, for the first time we faced the real possibility of having a unified access to a huge quantity of information coming from different projects. XML and web technologies used to develop the AI ML project, that was still an internal interoperability tool, represented some of the building blocks required to found a common ground for data interoperability. We have already seen other blocks, such as authority lists, federated databases, and shared resources. We will talk about it again later. As anyone knows, the more we get closer to our days, the more the importance of web becomes crucial, even for the scientific research. As McLuhan predicted in the 
60s of the last century, the medium is the message. And every new technology becomes an extension of our nervous system, bringing deep modification to our attitude of content use. The World Garden approach was outdated by the new concept of the web that, for the first time, brought to reality the dreams of uh, scholars uh, like uh, Bush and Theodore Nelson that, since the 40s of the last century, wandered about a truly interconnected digital environment full of data and information, always accessible. So, it was now time for the conversation to shift from public to global. It was only a matter of con it was not only a matter of connecting of connecting single clients and servers. It was not simply a technological problem. It was the first time that the problem of real data interoperability and accessibility could be perceived in all its complexity. To get a high degree of data interoperability and accessibility in the global web, you need to care about a vast number of political, scientific and technology related matters. With an overall approach, during the first phase of the history of computing in the humanities, the workflow for the scholar and the ICT expert were quite different, parallel, almost independent activities with few or no common points. ICT experts seem to retain some kind of secret code, inaccessible to ordinary scholars, that for their part often, often leave the entire development process under their control. That led obviously to the growth of a vast number of individual and closed applications, the so-called information islands. If in a pre-web standalone environment the problem of the information islands could be managed, and its complexity reduced. In the web, with this peculiar ecosystem, what remains into an island or within a walled garden will become sooner or later marginal, nearly invisible, and actually will tend to disappear. Walled gardens and information islands are, so, are also deeply linked to the concept of sustainability, while at an individual level, single scholars or researchers Sustainability could be not a big issue with accessibility, why accessibility actually was and is. From the point of view of a research institute, it might become crucial because the lack of ICT skills and the resulting outsourced training doesn't let the necessary know-how grow directly inside the research institute, meaning that they need to have a budget to pay external developers for building, upgrading, and maintaining online a lot of projects over the time. With all this in mind, during the last years, Sysmo started the actual process of building an open environment for publishing on the web its data. The starting point for building this next level of interoperability was represented by the available authority lists for authors, works, manuscripts, and so on, developed over the years and shared amongst all the federated databases. On top of the AIML archive, we started building a completely new tool called Mirabi to present our data on the web, a tool with a rich set of cross-database search functions based on XML for the data encoding and on the W-Core metadata element set for information dissemination and interoperability. To bring our data out of the wall garden of our internal land, which was absolutely fit to, to accomplish the scientific task of each individual editorial staff, but cannot be easily and safely published, we had to upgrade the AIML XML schema and search engine and to build a completely new public web application. Only at this point, actually publishing the data on the web, we faced the real challenge of interoperability. In other words, for the first time, we were supposed to join the global conversation. And here comes the cost action core business. Foster the networking activity among research institutes and promote best practices to avoid information. I don't know.
Now, it's your part. I will stop at the So, um, my slides are less beautiful than the other ones, but I have a big problem of interoperability with the Microsoft software. So. So, interoperability has been developed for two years in the ERH team. It doesn't mean that we hadn't prepared a bad thing before. It doesn't mean that we had no experience of it. The first plans to launch interoperability processes began around the year 2000, when several databases were born as the Jonas database or the Cartier database. First, they were developed in access. For the first time, it was decided to standardize some data and the signatures, which were quite differently expressed from a section or team to another. That decision was not easy to take and more difficult to apply than to consider. But, happily, these new projects all decided, once they became reality, to link themselves with the oldest database of the ERHP, the Medium database. Medium was a simple administrative tool designed to organize the collection and the saves of reproductions of sorry, yeah, the reproductions of microfilms of medieval manuscripts. To be able to organize this with efficiency when it was developed, it has been decided to structure and to use a database. The contained data concerns especially all items related to signatures or as you of these manuscripts. And all the next databases were conceived to use the signature format of Medium in order to make links to the items related to the reproduction of the manuscript thus to be. It was the first step toward interoperability. The next step was done when, in 2005, the IRHD and the École Nationale des Chartes in France decided to create an edition platform following the three rules that we cut it at first, sustainability, interoperability, usability. It was the Telma platform. Telma for Traitement Electronique des Manuscrits et des Archives. Uh, this platform follows the XML format and the TI guidelines. A lot of different electronic editions and digital publications were published on the same platform using a similar format and were able to make queries particularly or commonly. The search engine operates quite well on a simple level, but it could be interesting to build some deeper search engines, for example, about diplomatics, around the project Charte Galia and around the project Chart the original from Nancy in France. So, uh, in 2010, uh, the cost project became reality. At the same time, the IRHD decided to build real interoperability processes. The first approach, the simplest one and the easiest to be adopted by scholars from the IRHD, was to follow the path already drawn. We knew it was quite difficult, not to say impossible, to ask colleagues to change the shape of their data to be more linkable one with the other. So we preferred to propose the use of common databases, which can be easily transformed or, we, or which are developed at the beginning as real centers of communication, as nodes, to be linked to the other single databases. We were able to do that because we had done the choice five years ago to develop our new databases and to convert the older ones with PHP language and MySQL relational database system. In other words, by using open formats and open technologies. Thus, we have decided to convert the medium database, as you can see, uh, and with such a new version developed in PHP, it could be easy to link Medium to other databases in a very easy way because, as I said, some databases have decided to adopt some common data in such, in such a role 
during the last years. The database medium became more than an administrative tool and now it's also, and it's mainly, a scientific backbone to all the databases of the hierarchy. The repository of digital images of manuscripts of the hierarchy, called Bibliothèque des Manuscripts Medievaux, has been developed with a strong relation to Medium and is completely linked to it. For example, if you search information about a manuscript in Medium, you can immediately find the links to the reproductions of that manuscript in the BVNN. I will show you uh, later. But there are older databases quoting a lot of manuscripts. The Initial Database, for example, which is the oldest scientific database of the PRHT, and the last which has been recently published, the database dedicated to the description of decorations and miniatures, miniatures contained in medieval manuscripts was translated in PHP2. But there were problems with the signatures. They were coated in a shape which didn't match with the medium ones. So we decided to develop a process to recognize the signatures and to bring, to bring closer the signatures in medium and the ones in initial by studying the similarities of these different signatures. Thanks to that process, we are now able to establish and propose links between medium and initial, between medium and the Bibliothèque Virtuelle des Manuscrits Medievaux, and between initial and resolutions, pictures, images of the manuscripts. And you can switch between the databases and the Okay. So, the idea of that backbone database is quite satisfying because it allows to build concrete links between database, databases sorry. <coughs> without having to ask colleagues to modify their own data. Convinced by that experience, we decided to build another tool, a database which could be common to all databases of the unit, and it's a bibliographical database called Mobigen. So this database aimed to contain all new bibliographical items for all other scientific databases of RHT is developed in PHP and MySQL. By using this tool, designed to be a repository for bibliographical items, all scholars will add their references and then make links to them to fill their own The information about the topographical localization of the books concerned in the library of FIRHT could be also added to that database. So it's also an administrative tool.
to make a summary about characteristics and advantages of uh, a transverse, transversal tool. It allows simple relations, not too complex to build from a technical point of view. It allows strong relations and exchanges. It's immediately useful to every scholar because it gives direct access to additional information. Uh, you don't need to transform a lot of the already existing data. And uh, it gives the first to useful lists of authority. So, about this list. Um, so, these tools used as interfaces give to scholars the opportunity of building lists of authorities. The format, the structure, and the content of this list are designed and accepted to be used by everyone. These lists can be used without the need of the previously mentioned tools. Once you choose to use a list, uh, this list, if these are not going to change anymore, you are not compelled to use these tools. You can just upload the lists in your database and you use them as entries and outputs to other internal or external databases that choose your the same authority list. In the IRHT, you have such lists, but they are not numerous for the moment. First, because of the lack of standardization in the roadmaps of every database. Uh, but the youngest of them, like Bibal, around uh, medieval libraries and transmission of texts, has been conceived with this standardization spirit and this need of authority lists. Other databases, older ones, have been nevertheless built with existing authority lists. For example, the Cartulaire database, which inventories all manuscripts of medieval and modern cartularies, has the same signature format than Medium. It contains uh, the ID number of Medium and the other ID number for cartularies. But it contains also lists of place names taken from official lists and the INSEE ID number of these place names. So, a lot of databases, old as new, lack these lists because their designers didn't know anything about them when they started to work. More, they were afraid of, to choose one over another one, another list, sorry, because they didn't add any information about the quality and the usefulness of available authority lists. It's the task and the duty of our cost action to provide to all designers of databases some information about these lists and their values. So, okay. The third way of promoting interoperability in the IRHT deals with the search engines. Uh, search engines uh, which are able to search several databases at the same time. So, uh, this is the picture of the poster about all the databases of IRHT. It's obviously the interoperability part which is the less developed in IRHT, even if we have planned it. It will be what we call l'atelier du livre médiéval during the next month. All databases of IRHT being connected from one or two of the two ways described earlier are the first step of this application. There will be, probably, several engines because there are a lot of type, different types of information to be searched. First, full text retrieval and searching. IRHD has some important digital TI editions through the Telma Center and its numerous texts. With our colleagues of Labex, Labex Aztec, we study, we study some tools about full text searching and especially some linguistic tools like TXM of Serge Eden or like Philologic. But all these engines are quite difficult to operate and to upgrade. They are not, a, they are not always adapted to TI and there are not a lot and there are a lot of questions in France about their potential because there is a lack of communication and knowledge about other similar tools. Anyway, besides that problem, we already use a simple searching tool for Telma, which uses Lucent Solar, 
and it has to be reshaped and rethought from new. We intend to redevelop that recent solar, or a similar one, thanks to a new collaboration with the digital specialists of the University of Gaon, who came in January to the IRHT related, related to cost meeting, in order to connect by common queries the diplomatic databases of Gaon and Telma and to develop connections between the narrative sources database and the databases concerning the same objects in the RHT. A cost mission has been asked by Els de Parmentier to analyze further the relations between the diplomatic databases from both parts, and it seems clear that the future thematic to searching tools of Telma will be developed thanks to the cost action. Anyway, as we mentioned, Outside the first tools developed by Stelma, the search engine used by Bell is obviously not sufficient. We'll have to conceive different engines to complete the atelier lecture livre medieval. For example, some simple tools allowing to query on concrete topics. But also a common repository, OAI PMH, PMH sorry, or with RDF technologies. We will undergo all these tools thanks to the digital part of the BBC project uh, presented in the poster session. But the main question is, won't it be more interesting to conceive these tools together with the other cost partners? So the second part of my speech will be focused on some very practical work being done at uh, Paris and Orléans during my recent uh, scientific mission at IRHT. And it, uh, it will be focused on the matter of interoperability using uh, a common, uh, possibly a common unified list for shelf marks. The starting point is that uh, there are two uh, different authority lists about uh, uh, shelf marks conceived uh, independently by the two institutions during the last 20 years. At Sisman and FEF uh, over the years we collected some 95,000 shelf marks. Due to the very nature of the research work carried out at Sisman and FEF, those shelf mark, uh, the, the shelf mark list was built using information coming from standard tools like indexes, endlists, and catalogs. The current SISMA database's general schema is quite articulate and complex, involving more than 15 different projects with lots of tables and relations. Concerning the manuscripts, we have specific tables for shelf marks and collections, meaning the city library and holding items, as well as a number of other tables to keep track of other relations with other projects, namely MEL, MEM, which is uh, the Musicologic uh, Bibliographic Bulletin, uh, Bislam, Kalma, Canticum, Rikabim, which is about uh, medieval libraries, and the Leo by Mater and Mafra, uh, Italian uh, databases. And to record, those tables are used also to record other details concerning the manuscripts. The main manuscript table was recently updated to fit the needs of a growing number of different projects coming both from the Latin and the vernacular area. Uh, we have already seen examples of cross-project searches involving manuscripts during the first, uh, the very first day of the presentation about the Italian uh, project and network uh, trama. To manage the complexity of the manuscript conceived as a material, cultural and intellectual object, we have now more than 70 fields. 10 authority lists and 3 different subsections for composite, palimpsest and fragment manuscripts. Sorry. These are the number, the, those are the numbers <coughs> I've described. 
So, it's not the time to have a close look at the whole structure, as we prefer to focus on the collection and shop marks. Regarding collections, we have used a free field structure, city, library and collection. Each field has its own list to prevent errors and speed the data entry. Every array, which is the combination of city plus library plus collection, has its own ID used to establish the relation with the shop mark table. This means that you may that in the main shop mark table you don't have to store and repeat all the information, but you only have the IDs, so reducing the space needed and optimizing the information structure. For the alphanumeric part of the shelf mark stored in a separate table, we have used a simple two-field structure, one for the actual shelf mark and another used for the machine readable form of it. Here you are some examples of these two types of shelf marks. As you may see, on the left column we have the actual shelf mark and on the right column we have the transcription which is used for sorting data into the tables because otherwise we are not able to have a sorted list of shop marks. Another number of fields, as we said over 70, are in this table to describe specific aspects of the manuscript from a scientific point of view. Someone called it concurrent descriptions during the past days of workshop. So, uh, to simplify the whole structure for the shelf mark is something like this. In the first line you have the human readable form of it, in the second line you have the structure into the database form of the information, of the data, and in the last line you have the actual data present and stored in the tables. So, in addition to the uh, 95,000 shelf marks, we have collected in the authority list some uh, uh, 1,040 names of cities in Italy, Europe and so on, and some uh, to 2,000 and a half names of libraries and some 5,000 and a half unique combination of city, library and holding fields. As I said, I called it holding IDs. From a, scientific, from a semantic point of view, our shelf mark presents information following a simple set of rules. Name of cities are presented in their native language. Name of libraries are presented in their native language. Name of holdings are presented in the form provided by the catalogs, the standard catalogs, or the libraries. I mean, there is some kind of scientific work to validate those data. Shelf marks are presented in the form provided by the catalogs and libraries. The same for the name of holdings. And then, non Latin characters are transliterated into Latin forms. As you may see in the example, the gamma letter was transcribed using Latin characters. So, How to proceed to get to a common, to a shared resource for dealing with shelf marks? The first move was to compare the two lists produced by SysMFF and IRHT. Then we have to choose a modus operandi and to propose good, pra good practices and actual tools to the community to become more and more interoperable. To compare the two structures is not could be simple. Uh, could be simple. You have a, a schematic representation of the ways that Sismel and Yerste 
have to deal with shelf marks. At the first look, seasonal structure lacks a field for the country, while IRHT has a unique field, which is called shelf mark, grouping together holding and shelf mark, which are separate in the seasonal shelf mark structure. So, more in depth, IRHT has a system to manage different shelf mark typologies, historical and so on. Based, the system is based on a, a type list and uses also a multi-table structure to manage aliases, I mean variant forms of name of cities, name of countries and so on. Sysmel, on the other hand, adopted a database field to transcribe the shelf mark into a machine-readable form for certain purposes. And as a multi, a very complex multi-table system to deal with codicological, paleographical, linguistic, philological and so on, manuscript details. The link between all the related tables and the shelf mark is represented by a unique ID for each manuscript into the DB. From a very technical point of view, to have a first level of interoperability, and to foster the possibility of data exchange between our system, we need to set up a country field into the seasonal database and to populate it with the appropriate values. So we need to have the shelf mark stored into the IRHT database, split it into holding and alphanumeric part. Doing this, at least at the structural level, we will obtain a unique reference model for transcribing shelf marks. I've said, I've said earlier that another gap between the DBs of Sysmel and the RHT is represented by the alias structure adopted by the letter. From a scientific point of view, we believe that such a structure is of extreme interest for Sysmel to be implemented in its DBs because it provides a deeper level of historical information about the manuscript. From a technical point of view, we believe that the job to be done is quite simple, one should say sustainable. The resulting shelf mark model, the proposed shelf mark model, could be something like this. Country, city, library, holding and shelf mark all into separate fields. To evaluate the feasibility of it, we may have a look at the order of greatness of the involved lists. For the countries, we have 76 items in the ERHTDB, while we have no entry into the uh, seasonal DB because we lack this particular field. And some 20 of it are uh, related to the uh, USA, so we need to do some kind of uh, normalization. Then we need to create a new country uh, database field into the Sysmail database and to populate it with the values of a common authority list for place names, which has to be built. For the holdings, we have um, 2,345 unique holdings, name, unique holdings names into the Sysmail DB. So, it needs to create a new holding database field into the ERHTDB and to populate it with the values of a common authority list. The split of the existing values, holding and shelf mark, could be done in a semi-automatic manner using regular expressions or PHP scripts or other kind of tools. We need then to normalize data according to a common style sheet. I will try to clarify this point with an example focused on the names of cities in the ERHT and Sysmail DBs. We have some uh, 1000 names in the ERHT DB and some 1378 names in the Sysmail DB. We have then uh, 570 
three common items. And we have 438 items present only in the ERHT list and we have 800 items present only in the SISMA list. What does it mean? Among, uh, amongst uh, those peculiar and I mean different items uh, stored in the two databases, there are for sure, for sure some other common elements not recognized as similar by the database management systems due to the different conventions uh, in use at the ERHT and SISML for writing down shellcore, such as the use of diptongs used at the ERHT and not used by SISML, the use of accents and other special characters used by SISML and not used by ERHT, as in the example of Copenhagen, uh, the use of articles used to sort names by SISML and not used uh, used to sort the name by SISML and not used by ERHT. Um, but there are also some exceptions, uh, even at SISML, mainly uh, for uh, cities like El Cairo and so on. So we need to work uh, a little bit more on this particular um, topic. And then the use of uh, administrative um, determinations such as provinces uses, uh, used by SISMA for Italian place names and not used by ERHT, or the use of transliterating names for, set, for certain cities like uh, Al Cahira, which is Il Cairo. This work could be done in a semi-automatic manner using simple PHP scripts and so on. And this is one of the uh, tasks that will be uh, focused and uh, very clearly addressed in the near future by the two institutes. So, uh, this first level of data analysis uh, that will be improved in a short period together with the ERHT, as well as the proposed step and the proposed steps to get to a unified short mark list shared by, two, uh, by the two institutes and possibly by others, led to the constitution of a common set of rules and good practices for the projects yet to be implemented, to be more interoperable, and will aim to establish an actual common unified and shared list based on the ERHT and seasonal FEF set of shelf marks and to produce troubleshooting materials and guidelines for already established projects in order to improve their interoperability level. Okay, 
So uh, this is uh, a summary of the propositions we made about uh, the good uh, practices about signatures. So for the databases to be created, we propose a model list with the most accurate signatures around three or four strings, DOM, library, holding, shelf mark, with possibly a concatenation of the two last strings, holding and shelf marks. This could be a list of the most relevant examples of signatures, some uh, ideal typus list. Um, the second proposition for the database to be created databases to be created, it's an authority list, complete and concrete, containing all the signatures of IRHT and CISBEL, eventually likely restructured to be really common. This list could be given to every database to be created in order to prevent discrepancies and problems of standardization. <coughs> but it uh, can also give a huge amount of data to facilitate the work of the new beginners. And the last solution proposed to every beginners um, it can be a single table with a three or four strings aimed to simple databases, eventually to table files like Excel files, or a multi-table solution on two tables. To the first table already described, we add a second one connected with all secondary signatures, endo libraries, order, or different shelf marks. And that solution is the best one that can only be proposed to more complex databases like PHP databases or XML files. And for the databases already existing, uh, we propose a simple structure first, based on the model list, the ideal typus signature. The best solution could be, could be that the older databases could change uh, if it can be done slightly <coughs> easily, without huge cost and huge work, uh, there's signature format to this one. Eventually, we can propose the same authority list if the editor of the database thinks it could be of interest and uh, adapt it to his database. But if it seems too complicated, we propose the second solution the possibility of gathering all shapes of signatures, if not too complex or too different, in an indexation table in the future searching engine to be created by the post action. Uh, it already exists on prototype at IRHT, and we can gather all signatures from ancient and new databases in a special query field in Medium. Uh, the application is based on recognition of shapes of signatures by the similarity. So, uh, let's talk about uh, a project of interoperability between SysMail and uh, IRHT. Um, so, we will present how, at different levels, interoperability can be conceived and realized starting with the example of our two institutes, uh, IRHT and CISMEL. And uh, we have organized, especially through a STSM mission by Emiliano, uh, among the different teams of IRHT working on databases and digital edition, and particularly with the Digital Humanities team, which I represent today. <laughs> uh, these two institutes have decided to initiate collaborations at different levels, which are all dealing with interoperability and with the cost action. So, first way of collaboration, the rebuilding and publishing of a common tool around the database Les Gentils Latins of Guy Philippard, Michel Trigalet and the Volantists. It's an old database conceived with access, of, access software in the end of the years 90s. It's a repository of all Vitae, Passiones, Translaciones, Miracula, and so on, from the medieval period, once list, listed in the printed inventories of hagiographic manuscripts by the Volantists, and of a lot of other catalogues of manuscripts, all linked to a general BHL database. All these informations are linked to data concerning saints themselves, to data concerning geographical or institutional 
origins of manuscripts and to data related to many medieval manuscripts. For example, legendaries, lectionaries, and so on. A lot of large studies have already been made by Michel Trigalet in his unpublished thesis about medieval hagiographical manuscripts. You could say that this database is a working tool for him. That's why it's very difficult to publish it likewise. We have to transform it to keep the real useful common information and to choose a simpler digital structure because for the moment, for the moment it's far too complicated. It's not easy at all to undergo such a work. That's why the authors of the database have appointed the CISBEL and the IRHT to evaluate it, to analyze the ways of reshaping its data and its structure in order to publish it soon. But it gave us also another opportunity to conceive that database like a common tool of the two institutions. De facto, this hagiographical database contains data that could be very useful to be linked to ours. The manuscript, the list of saints, the text, the datings, some five or six very important files that we have to connect with our own databases. In other words, the Legendier database will be published apart from our collections, recognizing the authorships of Guy Philippart, Michel Trigalet and the Bonartists, but it will be published by our two digital edition teams in a structure and on a platform to be defined. And our own databases will be connected to the so defined interesting fields and files in order to enrich our own data and queries. It will especially enrich all our hagiographical databases, the Roman ones, Jonas in the RHT, the Latin ones for the Cisman, or the Greek ones. It will also help naturally and, and in a simpler way to connect ERHD and CISMED databases through that common tool. We would consider the hagiographical database as well as a real independent database as a web service.
compliant uh, to the TEI P5 uh, schema, uh, in particular the manuscript, a subsection of the manuscript, uh, uh, the section of the, of the TEI schema. And then Trame will parse this uh, XML schema and present results in a common uh, interface. So, uh, from uh, uh, a general uh, point of view, uh, we need uh, to uh, build the web service and we need to uh, adopt this common schema for exchanging data. Uh, from uh, a technical point of view, you need to know uh, how and if the selected database, in this case uh, Medium, uh, will accept remote service and uh, if the, the remote database uh, is also capable of sending you back uh, results with the XML uh, format. During my stay in Paris and Orleans, we developed some common workflow and all this is now uh, possible. And the, the, for the user, uh, it's, uh, a, I, I mean, I, I hope, it's a very big goal, it's because the, a single user does, uh, doesn't have to know anything about the structure of the database, it uh, has only to get to the uh, integrated interface to have a query and to uh, use the uh, results provided by the system. So, from a general point of view, you need only to know if the selected database uh, is built to accept remote queries and you need also to construct the, the adequate query expression, which is basically an URI. To do that, you need to know both the scientific and the semantic uh, sides of the databases. Uh, once uh, you have sent uh, a query, uh, the remote system, in this case Medium, will answer with this data packet filled with the encoded data. Here you have an example, a very brief example. There are uh, uh, other seven records in the original file, which is this, but for I, I, I have only a fragment of it. So, you can have a live try. Just a few words about the uh, possibility of projects uh, which could be conceived during the cost action uh, to be presented for an application to EC for the AIF framework program. So the objectives could be, it's just a proposition to discuss in details. Um, the objectives could be a targeted harvesting of metadata and data structured following standards in open access. Um, then a standardization of metadata and enrichment of data starting from authority lists, existing standards around manuscript studies in digital age. Uh, 
free access to any data and eventually enrichment of this data. Uh, for example, like Isidore, a semantic uh, French search engine. Um, and indexation of non structured data, full text, and of structured data like um, tag the text and textual data data. Uh, a searching interface allowing all kinds of approaches of data from a wide view to a very specific queries. And uh, a fully integrated search engine able to harvest repositories and databases. But it's only a proposition to discuss about that.